There were some of the old timers in the neighborhood used to talk about movie stars being down here. Mm -hmm. And Babe Ruth's name was mentioned a few times. He said he lived at the Borden's. Uh, the Borden's property was at the point mm -hmm. down at the end down here. Uh, while it's left in the property now is a couple of pylons. And back when I was a kid, there was a deck down part of the floor. And I used to swing my feet on it, sit on it and swing my feet. It was there. Mm -hmm. And um, there was all kinds of stuff from the cabin scattered around and stuff, you know. But um, I never gave much thought about the piano. We, you know, we heard from some of the old timers that Babe Ruth was down here. We heard that other, there was a speakeasy down here on the lake. Everything's gone now. Go ahead. And he was telling me about this piano, Babe Ruth. And I said, I know where it is. Huh. And we had seen it. And yeah. So the more we talked about it, the more it came back to us, the memories. Last time I saw it was right here. Uh-huh. In the back of it fell against the hillside. My first time down is when I grabbed my pick and I started digging, looking for it. I was surprised to not find it. Well, I had three encounters with this. When he first showed me, I had to have been about five. Because I wasn't allowed to leave the yard unless I was with a, somebody older. Uh -huh. Then, on about, I was about eight or so. It was like 1967 or 68. A new kid had moved in there, but we became friends. And I, uh, through conversation, he came up about the piano and he wanted to see it. So we went, I took him down to take a look at it. Uh -huh. When I first saw it with Steve, it was intact, standing upright. It was incredibly bleached. There were no black keys. They were all the same color. Huh. Um, when I came back in 68, the piano had just disassembled right in where it was standing. The keyboard fell straight down. The sides went off to the sides and the back went back. So being eight years old, we had a plan to get the strings and make bows and arrows out of it. <laughs> we didn't have any wire cutters with us. So who told you it, it belonged to Babe Ruth? No one. You just knew it was a piano at that point? At that point. Um, we covered it up. We took the strings and we flopped them away, probably 20 feet away. And we had the plate that we're looking for now. Uh -huh. And we covered the strings with it. We'd come back and do a little project later. We never get back. Oh. Then a couple of years later, I was 14 or 15, and we decided to build a little clubhouse down there. We were at that age, before you had a license, you didn't know what to do with yourself. <laughs> and the piano was still there. Well, we wanted to get along with our neighbors up here a little bit, and we decided to have a cleanup day. The whole back side of this hill was all trash, there was tires, metal buckets, and we decided to have a cleanup day. And the piano was in the way. So we burnt what was left of the piano. Oh my. The keyboard would not burn. It was just so moldy and everything. That one in the lake. The strings went into the bog. And the plate we were going to use to cook on. Now the plate, is that the harp? I believe that's, that's yeah. the harp. Yeah, okay. So we stood up on edge, it was very heavy. It took three of us, we started cartwheeling it towards the camp and it became ridiculous. We figured out how we're gonna be able to take it on and off the fire because it was so heavy. So we put that into the lake too. Oh my. So I know where the approximate area is. Oh, you do? Oh, wonderful. Of these different, the keyboard, the harp, the strings. We just haven't found them yet. So this is where the harp went in? Yes. You threw it in yourself? I had help. <laughs> How much did it weigh? Do you think? Well, I don't know. It was heavy. It took three of us to cartwheel it. Uh-huh. The piano sat over a little bit farther than where he is. Yeah. So we cartwheeled it this far and we said, this is crazy. We ended up putting it in the water. If this, in fact, is a spot, she went in here and banked off to the right. To my left. 
Correct. See that patch of duck, duckweed right there off your stern? Uh-huh. I'm assuming it would have landed in that vicinity. That quick? Yeah. That's where our plate is. <laughs> so you think it's that far out? What's throwing me off is the amount of shoreline that we have here. It used to be flat here and it's very comfortable walking through. But it's eroded. It's a great instrument. Uh, but what's better is a, it's a magnetometer that sits on the top of the water. Those are $24,000. Can you feel anything down there? Kevin, you, know you, you feel there are large rocks. And they really feel like metal, <laughs> so you can get fooled. Oh. Um, and and you can put a magnet uh, a metal detector down there and, and get a reading on those rocks. Uh huh. So it's a little tricky, and, and it's completely dark. I mean, it's like sure. The, the dry the divers call this a grill search when they come. <laughs> They're not seeing anything. Right. And I've used underwater lights that don't work in this pond. So in some ways, this is a very difficult, very difficult search.